This is an RNZ podcast. Hello, I'm Charlotte Ryan and welcome along to the Music 101 interview podcast. Music 101 is the music show that's live every Saturday afternoon on RNZ National. And this podcast, we've created it to catch you up on some of our favourite interviews that I've done over the years and also on the latest music news too. American alternative rock band The Pixies are releasing a brand new album in just a month or so, and they are returning to New Zealand to support Pearl Jam in November, so I thought it could be cool to look back at my Pixies interviews. In particular, my chat with David Lovering, original and current drummer for the band. If you want to know what musicians do when they're not touring, this man might inspire you. So he started playing drums in the Pixies in 1986, but when the band broke up in 1993, David became a magician. True story. But what interests me even more is his great interest in metal detectors. And yes, when he tours the world, he takes a metal detector with him. He's got quite a selection, quite a collection, I guess you could say, and he hunts for gold and treasures on beaches right throughout the world. I love the Pixies' music, but to hear about these hobbies behind the scenes is so intriguing. David Lovering's such an interesting, cool guy. I hope you enjoy this interview that he did for Music 101. Right now, I mean, I am in Monmouth, Wales. Um, we did the Cardiff uh, BBC Six Festival just the other day, and I'm actually at a recording studio called Rockfield, where um, Queen did, geez, they did Bohemian Rhapsody here, Rush did Farewell to Kings. It's an awesome place. So lots, lots of lambs around and uh, cows and everything. It's wonderful here. Yeah, so I remember hearing that it was on a farm. Rush are like one of your favourite bands, aren't they? They are, they are, actually. Yes, they are. <laughs> very in, very instrumental to me, but pardon the pun. Uh, what makes them so special? Is it the, When you say that about a band, is it the drumming that you love or is it the full aspect of the band? It's the it's the full musicianship. I mean, those three guys are just they're 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 professional. They're experts at what they do. But um, I think back when I was I don't know oh, I must have been sixteen or seventeen. My sister had a farewell to Kings, and I stole it from her. <laughs> it, it, it changed everything about the way you know. It was just this brand new kind of sound and everything that I heard, and just the musicianship and it just me being a drummer and everything. It was just blowing me away. So I was just taken taken by it back then. So now being at the studio, do you sort of get a little bit, I, I don't want to use the term fanboy, but you know, do you realise the specialty, you know, or how lucky you are being in the same studio? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, it's, it's a residential studio and I mean, um, this is the second time. We did Indie Cindy here years ago in 2011 and now we're back here and it's residential so we have these little, little apartments and I'm thinking, oh, was it Alex or Getty or Neil? Did they, did they, did they, did they stay in this one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Does that mean that you guys, you, you just released a new album a couple of years ago, but are you suggesting that the Pixies are working on new, more material? Well, actually, we did record a, a record already uh, in Vermont back in February, but we've had two years of free time, and um, the impetus coming out here for the BBC Six Festival was we have so much material, why not just keep going at it? So that's why we're at Rockfield. Um, this is um, uh, maybe even a, a second album, not, not counting the first, the one we just did, but this is something extra. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, is, is it the band that's prolific, or is it Frank Black that's prolific? Uh, maybe, yeah, Charles definitely Frank Black. Yeah, he's um, yeah, he's he's pumping them out, and um, <laughs> it's it's fun to do. Like we've been idle for so long, so this is a wonderful thing to get our juices back and get riding on the bike once again. So. Oh, crazy, David! Taking a step back, right to the beginning of the Pixies. Um, was it Kim Deal that sort of connected you to the Pixies? And I read on the internet. And, you know, you'd never know how much to believe on the internet. But initially you were kind of like, oh, I don't know about this band. And then you had a jam with them and decided to join. Is that is that sort of how the story went? Yeah, that's correct, Charlotte. Um, years ago I worked at an at a electronics place called Radio Shack uh, in the U.S. And I'm an electronic geek and um, <laughs> for forever. And um, I was working with a gentleman named John Murphy who was married to Kim Deal. And uh, the word through Kim Deal after answering an ad that Charles and Joe put out was looking for a drummer. So John suggested to Kim, why not uh, call me? So that was it. And I listened to some songs. I remember going to Kim's apartment years and years ago, probably 1985, maybe late 85. And um, listening to, you know, Charles play on an acoustic guitar. And again, 
like as I was saying, Charlotte, I was into Rush. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's quite a different uh, transposition from from <laughs> from from Pixies music. So it was just like, oh, interesting. But you know, it was uh, you know a gig and actually to be a you know in a band. So I took it, and it was not long before I was like, wow. I I mean. I, I loved all the songs and everything, which was all come on Pilgrim and all that stuff, early stuff that we did. But it was just, yeah, it, uh, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Loved it. And yeah, there, there's obviously just no regret. No, none, none at all. The funny thing is, you know, I mean, I, I was in college. I was an electrical engineer mm. and um, I, I got in. I had to leave after a year of working because the band was taking off. And my parents like, you know, oh, you're in a band, a band, you know, you know, even though, it, I mean, I didn't have success to them until I was on TV one time, but, <laughs> it, but, but to them, it was like, why couldn't you be a doctor? <laughs> so <laughs> you, you can't win. So, Well, one thing I find so fascinating about you, David, and which I love and I wanted to ask you about is your other career in a sense, because when you're not on the stage with Pixies and when the Pixies broke up, you were mm-hmm. able to just start a little side career um do i call you a magician being a magician yes yeah yeah that that's it um it's it's very easy on a business card if i change <laughs> careers i can use some um, white out and change the us to an ag oh. but, it's, <laughs> but it, yeah it's 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 something that if you told me when i was a kid i'd be a magician i would have laughed and rolled on the floor but um i was just enamored as an adult seeing a trick and i just had to learn had to buy every book, every video, take classes, join a, a place in Hollywood called the Magic Castle. I did everything to become a professional magician. And it's something I love, love doing and everything. And um, that's what I did up until, I mean, the Pixies uh, reunited. Yeah. And I, mainly now I do it socially and as uh, all, again, again on social media for the Pixies and stuff like that. But um, it's fun. It's fun. It's something I, I love doing. That's so crazy. And, you know, listeners at the moment will be thinking magician, but it's more than just a card trick sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I do love cards. I love, love, love cards. Um, but um, to, I mean, initially when I was into magic, I was doing a lot of card stuff. Uh, but I needed to get a stage show because, you know, it's I just can't do birthday parties and things like that. So um, <laughs> No, it's going to pay the bills. Show. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. That was that was it. So um, I developed a thing called the scientific phenomenalist, which is basically what I found out is, you know, magicians are, are playing characters, really, if, if they're some 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 uh, in, in whatever ilk they, they choose. But the thing to really do is just be true to yourself and true to myself as some geeky science guy, which I I mean, I love science. I love electronics. So that was my stage persona, just a scientific phenomenalist doing um, physics experiments that were kind of wild mixed in with magic that uh, you know i didn't say it was a magic show but there was magic going on but mm. it's it's definitely other things that i that i go into now what did you call it again a science scientific phenomenalist i love that that's i don't know what it means <laughs> but it sounds quite powerful <laughs> <laughs> yeah it works it works <laughs> so could you if you had to pick one magic or slash science or music what you'd pick mm-hmm. Uh, I think I definitely music. Um, I, I've done music, music most of my life, whether it be drums, bass or synthesizers or something, something, something of that ilk. I get a lot of joy out of and I love I love doing and um, I've been doing it much longer. And um, mm. uh, yeah, music, music would definitely be it. it, 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 it uh, it's something that fulfills me much, much more. I wonder if, and this is just me thinking totally aloud, but you know, you mentioned your parents before not taking music seriously. I wonder if you subconsciously sort of had that career in your back pocket in case the Pixies didn't work out. <laughs> well, I'm not a doctor, but I mean, I, I, well, well, the funny thing was, is I'm thinking when, the, when I did leave my electrical engineering job, mm. I, I thought I had something to fall back on. And yeah. the Pixies went for, I think, seven years before we broke up. And at that point, I was well out of the game. I mean, there were kids much younger than me. I could not go back to engineering. It was it was something that was gone. So that's why I had to think of other things. That's why magic came into the play. But oh, of course, because engineering had just moved so quickly in a sense. Well, not even moved so quickly, but I was much older now. I wasn't a young kid out of college like getting easily a job. And, um, it was more. It was my my thought it really yeah. that I was I was far away from it, and there were other people. Uh, uh, more fresh and more available to do it. So, 
But um, I still do it as a hobby. I repair a lot of um, equipment on the road and stuff like that or whatever. So it, it's comes, it comes handy. <laughs> that must be so good. Uh, you know, being, well, I hope you're not taking advantage of that, but that must be very helpful having you there. <laughs> oh, oh, hopefully, yeah. Yeah. I, I, um, it doesn't show in my uh, paycheck, but <laughs> <laughs> you're a father these days, aren't you? Yes, correct. I have two boys. No, both uh, 13 and 9. Uh, it took me a long time to be responsible, is what I say. <laughs> um, those are wonderful ages. I've got a 14 year old daughter. But are they showing any interest um, in music now? Have they discovered their love for the Pixies yet, you know, as often kids do by themselves? Um, it's interesting because I like I, I have a piano at home and I have drums and I have a bass guitar and I have synthesizers, all kinds of things to play with. Yet they they show no um, uh, no they don't they don't <laughs> take to it. I mean we do force them to take piano lessons, as with uh, as as what I did when I was a kid. But um, there's nothing just natural doing it, and hopefully it's just going through the ether that they're they're hearing you know how to. To, to maybe play drums or something like that, if it if it does come along, but um, yeah, they've seen me. They've seen shows. They they uh, uh, they've seen the Pixie Show, and um, you know, it's 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 interesting as a, as a kid. It's it's something they're um, they're used to. I don't know how how unique it would be because it's you know they've been they've, they've been used to it so long. But um, yeah, but they're they're enjoying it. Would you? If they did start showing signs of musicianship and, you know, interest in it, would you encourage them to get a back job? You know, would you encourage them to still do a degree in engineering or something as well as being in bands? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing, I don't care what it is as long as it's some, a passion that they love. Yeah. If they can pull off something that they love and work at, that would be a joy. I don't care what it is. But um, I know that, you know, the Pixies were very lucky. We had something and a uh, special... Uh, how it all worked and stuff like that. It was, it was, it was, you know, I put a lot of luck into it as well. So, um, you know, it's tough being a musician. It's, uh, you've heard of the starving musician, that, that phrase. Yes. Well, it, 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 my other career, which is magician, I call it the dying magician. That's even harder <laughs> to, to make a career out of. <laughs> were you a dying musician at one point? Were you, were you, do you remember the days of being a starving musician? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I was initially, you know, being, I would say 18, 19 you know playing in local bands and stuff like that and this was something a dream that i wanted to do yeah. this was something that i i i, I dreamt out for a long time since i started playing drums and then came the point where you know i had a girlfriend at the time which says you've got to do something else so that's what that was the impetus of going to school going to college and university to get my uh, engineering degrees and um i put the drums away for four years five years i didn't play drums until six years actually and it was a year after after working like i say i started gigging in my senior year with the pixies around boston and that that was the first time getting back in the drums in a long time and i, I gave that all i i gave everything up and then went back to it so it was it was something that i loved and lost wow and i've actually done it twice now because the pixies broke up and i, I didn't play the drums for about nine ten years until the reformation so that was something i got back and loved again yeah. Is it an emotion? It must be an emotional feeling getting back on the drum kit playing. It's because it, is it muscle memory? You know, remembering the songs. It, it is. It is. It is. Um, um, it's something. As again, I've done it since I was a kid. Anything mm. you do since you were a kid, it's 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 pretty easy to do. Mm. And uh, I had played these songs so long that I knew them, and I just knew how to play in general. I'm not even with the Pixies. It's just uh, it was very easy to do. Definitely muscle memory, like riding a bike again. Yeah. You mentioned before being a starving artist, and I sort of laughed because I have been listening to lots of interviews and reading about you over the last couple of days, and I giggled because I was like, I wonder if when he was a starving artist, is that, if that's where he got into his metal detecting work. <laughs> you know, uh, I understand oh, you yeah. really enjoy, what do you call it? What's the hobby? Metal, de you know, you have a metal, metal de detecting. Yeah. yeah, metal detecting. I've, I've done that. I, I grew up in New England, um, which is a very historic part of uh, the United States. Uh, in the Northeast. And um, behind my parents' house, it was just a plethora of old, old, um, uh, I would say cellar holes from the early 1600s and things like that. And I would find lots of artifacts, whether it be oyster shells that were in the ground uh, from what they ate to pipes and uh, parts of just iron and things like that. So that piqued my interest in it. And as a, when I was about 10 years old, I got my first metal detector. And 
I'm now 60. I've been doing it 50 years. I mean, I absolutely love it. It's I can't think of any other hobby where you're usually in an, an idealistic place, whether outdoors or at the beach, and um, you're going along with headphones on with a slight little tone in your head, and you get to think and dream or whatever what you whatever you do. And when you do find something, you get to say Eureka. I mean, it's <laughs> it's 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 pretty fun. <laughs> do you actually say Eureka? No, 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 no. But, uh, but I, I get excited when I find a gold ring or a silver or an old copper coin or something like that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, we, any starving artists listening, maybe that your story there could inspire them. <laughs> well, I mean, I actually thought it, when the Pixies broke up, I would love to do metal detecting full time. That was it. I would just love to travel, travel and go into detecting because I was doing very well pulling in things. I, mean, I would work. Um, I lived in California or Los Angeles and I would work the beach every day. And I would pull home probably on good days, depending on weather co- conditions and knowing how to read the surf. Because I would have underwater detectors, I would go in the water. I would pull home maybe a ring, maybe a ring, two rings every couple of days, gold rings or, or whatever. So I have a, I have a, I have a nice bag of gold rings and old coins and stuff like that. And the thought was there, man, I could just travel and do this, or even open a metal detecting shop. Oh but, um, the, the, but the Pixies uh, Reformation beat me to it. So. <laughs> You've inspired me. I feel like I need to go do it. I don't know if we've got that quite that history though here in New Zealand. Um, all the... Oh, there is, there is. Well, you well you have the gold if you travel. Oh, out, yeah. So. Uh, gold and minerals. And things, so. Are you, yeah. you when you come to New Zealand? I'm so stoked for those in the South Island. I grew up in the South Island too. But you're playing in Christchurch, which is amazing, as well as Wellington yes. and Auckland. Um, but mm-hmm. will you get a chance to go do some gold digging while you're here? Uh, I would like to. In um, I've it. It's funny because I'm in Rockfield right now, and if I look around me, it's just, it's fields, it's English fields, and there's a lot of Roman and Saxon and Celt uh, um, occupation here. I mean, I would, I would have loved to bring my metal detector here, but I'm really down to work. We yes. have to, we have to do a lot of work here, so I don't, I don't think I would be relegated to the time of, of having free time. So. <laughs> I've taken my detector a few times out, depending on if we're doing residencies, if we're playing an area at a certain time. But the thing is also, I, I, must, I must say, Charlotte, yeah. is we play a lot of cities. We're usually not out in the country, True. per se, like now. So cities are a little tough. There might be a park in a city or something like that. But the, the good stuff is really doing research and being out in a, in a, in a, in a different locale where I can capitalize even more. But um if it, if it if it happens, I, I probably will bring my detector sometime. It's just uh, when and when, when and when. So. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. Um, I, I'm going to go and look one look for one on Trade Me now. We've a Trade Me here in New Zealand's like eBay. Oh, right. <laughs> or cool, cool. Yeah. If you need any help, Charlotte, I'll help you out. So. Okay, thank you so much. There you go. I'm quite tempted to go out and get a metal detector myself. I was speaking with David Lovering of the Pixies. He's been drumming for the Pixies since 1986, and yes, it was 1993 when he decided to become a magician and look at alternative careers. This November, the Pixies return to New Zealand, thus supporting Pearl Jam on Friday the 8th of November, and then Sunday the 10th. I'm really intrigued to know what they'll do that night in between. I love to know what bands do in New Zealand on their nights off. But keep an ear out for the Pixies' brand new album out in October, The Night the Zombies Came. There's a new single called Chicken, which is out now. Until next time, thank you so much for listening to our Music 101 interview podcast. Tune in each Saturday afternoon on rnz.co.nz. And of course, if you missed the show, you can keep up to date with our podcasts.